I'm then going to ask um, two incredible people to join him on the stage. I'm going to ask um, Dr. Lucas Shalua from CD, um, CD Christian Center to join him on the stage as well. And then I'm also going to ask Pastor Nsian Dossi from King's Touch Church to also join him on the stage. And then I'm going to practice my muscles. See, I'm not an elephant. I know I can move. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I'm going to, what we're going to do right now, we're going to have what we're calling a reflective conversation. Can we agree that we've heard a lot? Right? And it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. We've heard a lot. And so what we're going to do here um, is we're going to have a reflective session on what has been shared. Now, this reflective session is also something that everybody here will get to engage in. So your reflections, your takeaways, what you're thinking, the things that have been triggered and prompted within you, please put them down because we will also come back to you and we will all get a moment to speak. And if you, for, for example, you think that, oh, Kels will not come to me, I am coming to you. <laughs> she will not select me, I'll not put my hands up, I'll, fi I'll find you. Just so that you know. All right. And so with that, I'm going to um, come over to you and just pr perhaps um, Pastor Nsia, as well as um, Dr. Shalua, give you a moment to introduce yourself. And just in brief, you can start with a, just a um, brief reflection on what um, um, Dr. Dennis has shared. And then we can go from there. Uh, thank you so very much. Uh, my name's uh, Dr. Lucas Shalua. I wear so many hats. I am the senior pastor at the moment at uh, City Christian Center here in Upanga. Since last year around March. But I am also a leader. I am an entrepreneur and an ac academician. I do own a college and a university in North Carolina, United States of America. I'm still the president of that college. We also own, with my wife, Dr. Dorothy, at the back there, we also own a home health care in North Carolina. We also are involved with the real estate businesses here in Tanzania and back in the United States. I love the Lord. I have three children, and they're all millennials and Generation Z. So it's quite interesting talk we're hearing right now. And again, I feel so honored to be with uh, the panel here, with the panelists, and to do my reflections. And I really look forward sharing and also hearing from young people around here. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. A hand of applause to them, please. So what we're hearing is what we have is business leaders, what we have is spiritual leaders, what we have is household and generation leaders um, on the stage, and we also have massive change agents. All right, um, Dr. Shalua, over to you. Uh, thank you so very much. If Dr. Sempebwa said that he was not preaching, I'm wondering when he preaches what happens. <laughs> but that was a very dynamic and very broad talk. And there are so many things that caught my attention. But there is this one thing I kept on thinking that it seems as if Africa as a nation, as a continent, has lost its identity. We are in the identity crisis mode. We don't know who we are and what we can do. A good analogy of that elephant. There is another one also for the bear, which the animal activists decided to take this bear back to the wilderness. The circus bear had served for more than 20 years. And the animal activists say it is time to take it back to the wilderness. 
Once they dislodged this bear to the bush, the bear kept on walking only 20 feet back and forth because that was the size of its cage. And they had to take it back to the circus because it could never, ever survive again in the bush. And again, when you are saying that, it came into my mind, that's what we are. We have been brainwashed so much that we don't know who we are. We have extended out the hand to beg literally for everything. We don't know how much brain power collectively we have. And so many times I've been asked in the United States, are you sure you are from Africa? <laughs> and I said, the last time I checked, yes, I am. <laughs> and many people don't believe that good things can come out of Africa. And they have made us to believe that nothing good can come out of our continent. So we have been shooting ourselves down on our feet so many times. We will want affirmation yeah. from somebody else to yeah. do something yeah. which is completely ours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We want somebody else to endorse our own plans and strategies. So my take is truly we need that intellectual emancipation. Yeah. Right. Somebody needs to tell us and wake us up that we have all that it takes to become what we want to be. We don't need anybody at times. We can collaborate. We can work with them. But in essence, I believe that we are independent. It, we have everything which takes us to become very wealthy. By the way, the last time I checked, we are the wealthiest continent. We are so wealthy. And when we talk about wisdom and knowledge and understanding, the corporate world at the moment is borrowing a lot of African wisdom and philosophies and just to change the verbiage, just changing the words, they talk of you know, uh, corporate responsibility. They talk of, uh, they talk of uh, co communal, yeah. you know, the community. I mean, we have been in community yeah. since when Africa is known. We live in communities. Yeah, right. right now, they are coming with these buzzwords as if it is something new. Yeah. But we have been doing that forever. So it's time, I believe, we need to look into what we have, value it, use it for our own good. And the African proverb which is used everywhere now in the world is if you want to go fast, go by yourself. If you want to, to go farther, go together. We had that wisdom for thousands of years, but right now every big corporate company in the world uses that wisdom, but we need to own it. And some people talk as if it is theirs. Well, I believe it is ours. And we need to put a copyright on some of our wisdom. They need to say that this comes from Africa. One time, I went to a coffee, a coffee place, a chain which is called Starbucks. Some of you might know Starbucks, but it's very popular in the US. And to cut a long story short about Starbucks, I was told even the original brand they had they stole it from Ethiopia. And they had to pay the Ethiopians because they were like the gurus of coffee around the world are the Starbucks while even the logo and the coffee itself comes from Ethiopia. 
And thank God to the Ethiopians, they rose and confront that big elephant. And they had to pay them for taking their identity for so many years and making so much money out of it. And there's so many stories which what comes to my mind is it is time to change our mindset. It is time to know who we are and to look at our potential and do because there is no Greek, there is no Jew. God has given us gifts. God has given us a lot of potential which remains untapped. <laughs> Thank you for now. <laughs> Thank you very much. And so um, we're talking about mental models. And these mental thoughts, thought patterns that are within Africans so that we don't believe in what we own. One of the things that you, you talk about when you go to America, they tell you, are you sure you're from Africa? One of the things I particularly, I love Kenya, but I particularly hate is when I go to Kenya, they say, are you sure you're Tanzanian? <laughs> you, you don't appear. And across every platform I'm in, there is no way you're from, I'm like, why? And then there are these stereotypes. Yeah. Tanzanians are, I, I won't say them, you know them. I don't like, want to put these words into the cosmos, but Tanzanians are, Tanzanians are, and you, you don't look Tanzanian, and you don't sound Tanzanian, you don't. And I'm like, listen, I am Tanzania, the Kilimanjaro flows through me. But then, unfortunately, what I've seen in those platforms is some people would say, and us young people would say, you know, I feel, actually, I feel American because you, you, you feel. <laughs> and so as a young person, I've been in those platforms where because we, one way or the other, other people relate to us as other, we want to quickly um, disassociate with ourselves with what we consider is negative. Instead of now taking the mantle and being responsible for saying, actually, the reality is this. Yeah. Right? And then on the other hand, I just wanted to share a story. I'm going to come back, back to you just on, this, on the side of um, young people. Um, I, I, we work on Niche Africa, we work within the creative space. And one day, one of um, our creatives, um, I won't share his name, but he came to me and he was really disgruntled. And Mama Christian, he says, um, he's like, why don't we invent anything? Because we work on, on projects to do this, to change people's mental models about what we as Africans can do. And I said, and we were working on a project and he's like, it's really sad that the guitar is from, from the West, that the drums are from the West, that these dances are from the West, hip hop is from the West, kizomba is from the West. And I sat there aghast, because I was like, hey, 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 there's a problem. Because all these things, are African. Poems, he said, poems are from the West. Singing and those, uh, the notes, they're from the West. What do we do? We take everything. And so he, he so I, when these sessions where a lot of young creatives are going through a massive, massive, massive um, crisis because you don't believe that what's yours is sacred. And so we try to copy what we believe count from them. But the fact of the matter is, all these things that he was saying, we started having a conversation about, it, about its history. Um, Dr. Shalua, over to you. This is getting so nice. I feel like standing and talking, but I, I won't. Um, I want us to take this discussion to the next level. Uh, coming back to Pastor Nsia, I want to challenge probably the IT people to create our own Google, you know, the African Google. That will solve a lot of problems. We'll have a place to point our children to. And having said that, I've been thinking a lot for some few years about the question which was posed here of what is the solution. It's so easy to want the solution to come from outside, somebody else to come and rescue us. Probably the government should do something. Probably the church should do something or somebody else should do something. But nowadays I tend to ask myself, what do I need to do to become that solution? And 
for the sake of the audience, a person who has that question, what needs to be done, my thinking will be we need to catch up with knowledge and understanding. We, I am, I need to, to apologize first before I say these very strong statements. Being born in Africa, raised in Africa, bred in Africa, and lived outside for more than three decades, and now I am back, I'm realizing something which we kind of like miss a little bit. We have a generation right now in Africa of young men and women who are very pro-entertainment rather than education. And everywhere I look and I observe, including my own children, the amount, I studied medicine to its depth. And when I was released to the world, I realized I am knowledgeable in one area, but a fool in so many other areas. And it showed my insecurity, and I took time. I studied myself to do computer programming, to do websites, to do telephones, to do everything. And in other places, I've been testifying that I managed to make my own telephone company from my basement, and I learned myself. That's how much I realized that I was behind in terms of electronics. So I challenged me, many people who I meet, and I say, what do you do best on all this understanding, all this knowledge that is out there? And my children, I normally tell them that if you're watching TV, you are on the wrong side of the tube. The person who is on the other side of the tube is making all the money they need to make. You are on this side of the tube, you are losing all the time and the money, which you could have been on the other side of the tube. So what do we do with the time, like Pastor Ancia said very well, what do we do with the time that we have? What do you learn? When you have your cell phone, there was a time in my life, this is a joke, not right now, but there was a time in my life, every time I get a text message, it was $100 coming into my account. Every time it goes like, ting, I was making $100, $200. And every day, I will make up to 300, 400 text messages coming in. So I will make $3,000 a day. Every day, That's, that was my resolution, that the cell phone is going to be an instrument that is going to make money for me. So I learned to make software. I learned to make apps. I learned to make e-learning platform. I am having a medical background. I could not blame anybody. That was the passion I followed. So my challenge to you young men right now we can sit here all day long while there is YouTube University sitting there. You go there, watch music, it's good. You go there, watch preachers preach, it's good for your spiritual health. But what do you do to make yourself, you know, realize your destiny? Get out of poverty. There is so much Africa can do. I was challenging another group of people and I asked them, what do you have? And one person told me, you know what? I am a, computer, a software engineer. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, what are you doing right now? He told me this is the second year I'm still trying to get employed. And I said, where have you posted yourself that you, are, you have what you have? He said, nowhere. And I told him, you know what? There are websites whereby around the world, everybody who has a skill 
post their skills and they can solicit work from all over the world. And one time I was looking for a software engineer. There was no one person from Tanzania listed on that website. No one person. There was a time I was, I was writing a book. I wanted somebody to transcribe the videos to in order for me to write that book because I had made so many talks and I wanted to compile those talks they were in English, a little bit in Swahili, to make a book. So I went to this website, find somebody from Tanzania to, trans to transcribe that for me. There was nobody. And where are these people? They are full in our churches. They are everywhere else except where they could take themselves out of poverty. They could be in the world platform making a difference. They're not there. So I want to challenge the young generation. And I don't just challenge them by telling you, I challenge you by doing what I'm doing. I tried it and it worked. So you can try. <laughs> it works the world has all these windows and gates waiting for young people to step into. There are people who look down on African education. They say, you know what, I'm an inbred. I studied first degree in University of Dar es Salaam, second degree in Mzumbe, and my PhD is, I don't know, in Tumain University. So I am inbred. I say this is the best education you can ever have. You know why? Because I am an academician back in the US, I am a professor, and I teach medicine. And I can compare the level of understanding of people who trained in Africa compared to those who are trained somewhere else. We have the best thinking way, the critical thinking, the way they take us through our education system prepares us to be global citizens. You can survive anywhere in the world based on what you have trained here in Africa. The only problem is we are that elephant we were told. We have a shackle on our feet and we don't want to move. We think this is not for us. We cannot do this. So I believe the first thing to do is to look what, you, what we have. Moses, if I come to the ancient scriptures, yeah. Moses was asked of God, what do you have in your hand? And Moses said, just a stuff. If you listen careful, Moses didn't know what he had in his hand. He said, just a stuff. And God, to show him it is not just a stuff, he told him, throw it down. Yeah. And when he threw it down, it turned into a what? Into a big snake. And the Bible says Moses ran away from that snake. Once you know what you have, you will be so surprised. You will literally run from yourself. You will be so shocked why you didn't know all this time that you have so valuable of a thing, which is, you know, the, the understanding, the time, the vitality. Even the, being in Tanzania, for you Tanzanians, being Tanzania right now, the whole world wants to come to Tanzania. What do they see that you don't see? So open up your eyes. Abraham was told, all that you see is given to you. So if you don't see, it's not yours. Thank you. All right. A hand of applause once again.